Hey everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Noah Kelman and I am here as always teaching you everything that I know about modern jazz piano. Today I'd like to go over some of my favorite arpeggiation techniques, which is also going to include some two-handed run construction. How do we actually create some really, really interesting arpeggios? What can we actually use them for? What are some different contexts, right? So first I'm gonna talk about kind of the construction and creation. Um, some different ways that I go about it. And then if you stick around toward the end of the video, we'll actually talk a little bit more about application, um, some good context to use them in. But really quick, if you're new to the channel, please consider clicking subscribe and clicking the little bell to turn notifications so you don't miss any more videos just like this one in the future. And also, if you're someone who feels that you would benefit from some one-on-one -on -one guidance working with a teacher to work on your goals, please feel free to click the link in the description, set up a totally free quick call with either myself or someone on my team and basically we'll just talk about your goals and see if working together would be a good fit to help you get from point A to point B. All right, so this is kind of what I like to refer to as arpeggio formation theory. I'm sure there are a lot of people who have come up with really interesting ways of creating arpeggios, but this is just kind of what I've come up with on my own based on my own experience and my own you know, goals for the sounds that I've been trying to achieve. So I'm super happy to share this all with you and uh, I hope you enjoy it. So first of all, you know, we've talked a lot about one-handed arpeggios on this channel. Super quick tip, one thing that I like to often do is actually just take, for example, my left hand voicing. Let's say it's like, here we're in uh, F minor doing an F minor 11. Literally, I will just straight up arpeggiate that voicing. Right, and you can get some really, really nice sounds that way. Now this is where you know arpeggio formation theory starts to get kind of fun. So that's just a single shape, a single four note shape, right? But what if we wanted to do something a little more complex? Well, we can start you know, actually creating an arpeggio with two different shapes, or we could really think of these as melodic cells, which is something that I've talked about before, right? So it's a four note arpeggio, four note cell, but what if we actually then add another cell as part of the arpeggiation, as part of our, you know, way ascending or descending. All right, so let's try one of these out. So let's do, how about that? Those are our two cells, our two shapes, right? Might be better to think of these in terms of shapes as opposed to melodic cells. I really like that, right? And of course, as part of this, you can always practice everything descending as well. Man, you get some really, really, really nice sounds out of this, right? And by the way, just as a quick note, it's it's definitely fun, and I encourage you to you know steal the exact ones I'm showing you here, which honestly I'm just coming up with on the fly in this video. But as we do this stuff, it's such a great opportunity for you to actually work on creating some of your own material, your own vocabulary. So. The reason, rather than just showing you some cool arpeggios here, I'm actually showing you some of my theory here is so that you can create some of your own, right? And that's a really, really cool thing to do. And by the way, if you wanna get deeper into some of this stuff, um, I go into this exact type of material, a lot of my own unique methodology here, specifically for very modern jazz piano and modern harmony, um, but still coming from kind of a beginner intermediate starting point. Um, check out my Jazz Piano Secrets course. It's a video course, 12 weeks of material, although a lot of people are actually spending more like six months to even a year working through it. Um, and I, I worked super, super hard on it. Now doors are actually closed right now, registration is closed, but it's already been several months and I'm opening up again in October. So that is just a quick aside for you to know, you know, you can get prepared if you want. Um, doors will be opening in October if you're interested go to join.jazzpianosecrets.com and I'll also make sure that that link is in the description. You can get on the wait list and then you will be the first to find out when the slots open up. All right, so so far we've done a two shape arpeggio. Let's, let's just call these shapes instead of cells. What if we added a third shape? So that's another really, really cool thing we do. And you'll notice that this third shape is actually descending. So we're adding two ascending shapes with a descending shape. And this is why I call it arpeggio formation theory, 
because you can really kind of get into this stuff from the theoretical standpoint. It's really fun. You can also add in, you know, connecting notes in the middle. So this is really still just a two shape arpeggio, but each shape, um, or really the first shape actually both ascends and descends. That's our first shape. Right? Fun stuff. <laughs> this is really fun stuff. I really, really enjoy teaching this stuff because it's also stuff that I just kind of mess around with for fun anyway when I'm practicing. Um, and honestly, kind of coming up with my own material here for, for playing and performing, right? All right, so this is great stuff for one-handed arpeggios. Now you can apply all of this to a two-handed arpeggio. So I love putting a shape in each hand, right? So we could do um, a three-note shape in the left hand and a three-note shape in the right hand. Right, and I love this because you can really create some beautiful textures with this part of the theory here. So all we did was just combine two shapes. We could do a two note shape in the left hand and then a four note shape in the right hand. So this is, this is really powerful stuff. There is so much interesting material that you can actually come up with using these techniques. Um, now actually, good news is I actually do have something available that contains some of these within it. Can, contains some of my favorite one hand and two handed arpeggios and runs. That's called 30 Sick Runs and Arpeggios. You can actually find that at jazzpianoconcepts.com slash store. Um, and so if you're, if you're like, I don't feel like waiting for those Jazz Piano Secrets course, um, I want to dive right into learning some arpeggios now. Um, that's an awesome resource for that, and it's super affordable at jazzpianoconcepts.com slash store. Be sure to check that out. All right, let's just keep running with this. So we've been doing a little bit of smaller shapes here, a little bit clustered. We could also open up to some larger shapes, right? So that's pretty awesome, right? So now I'm really kind of arpeggiating a big open voicing here, kind of a fifth bass voicing. So that's really, really, really cool too. Um, this is another one of my favorites. You've probably heard this voicing before. I've probably even shown it on the channel but it makes a really fun arpeggio as well. Right, so that's really, really cool. So getting into this two-handed stuff, there is so much interesting arpeggiation that you can do. You could also kind of um, flip the hands, right? So you could, do, you could do a shape that crosses over. So you could do. Some of this stuff sounds very impressionistic, right? So in other words, the right hand starts underneath where the left hand ends. Not the cleanest execution, but you see what I mean here, right? And of course you can go down. Sounds kind of like, you know, classic, depending on how you play it, kind of like raindrops falling sound um, from that impressionistic era. Um, I'm a huge Ravel and Debussy fan, if you all hadn't noticed on my channel. Um, and definitely stick around. Again, if, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please feel free to, to click subscribe. And actually really would help me out if you would click the like button as well to help me move this video up in the YouTube algorithm. Um, that is a huge help for me. So if you've been enjoying the content and getting some great ideas out of it, I would really appreciate you hitting like. But anyway, so this is kind of an outer look at 
what I like to refer to as arpeggio formation theory. Um, these are concepts that I've come up with, but I do not claim to be the inventor of them. I'm sure a lot of other people have thought about this stuff as well. This is just how I personally like to break this stuff down. I like to break it down so that all of us here on this channel can immediately go out and apply it and immediately use it to create our own unique vocabulary. Um, so that's really, really important to me. So as promised, really quick, I wanna talk about context. How can we apply some of these arpeggios in context? Well, for the two-handed stuff, I think, you know, it probably goes without saying, but solo piano is just a great, great place to apply these kinds of arpeggios and textures to create really beautiful flowing motion in your chords, right? So often a beginner, um, or not even a beginner, but an intermediate pianist comes to me and plays a melody and they just kind of play the chords. Maybe with a little bit of upwards arpeggiation. Right? And it's like, well, what do you do from there? How can you fill up the space, create some more interesting textures? Well, take this arpeggio formation theory, theory <laughs> sorry, take this arpeggio formation theory that we've been talking about today and actually use it to create textures to fill up space during solo piano. So that was, that was a little bit of a random example, um, just taking a couple 251s and coming up with arpeggios on the spot that I haven't really worked on before. But if you actually sit down and think this through a little bit more and actually work on bringing out the melody, right, you could actually come up with some really beautiful textures to play around your melody. So that is how I would you know, advise you to work on using some of these in context. Now, you know, in the context of playing with a trio or with a band, of course, you're gonna want things to be a little bit more in time, but check out players like Herbie Hancock, Chick Corea. I think they've really used some of these textures really, really nicely. Right? Again, super random, I don't know where that came from, but just a super random example of just kind of coming up with an interesting two-handed arpeggiated pattern um, in the context of this kind of modal D minor thing we've got going here, right? and doing something while maintaining the metronome, you know, the time in your head. I think I, I, think I did that all right. Um, but that's another way to really kind of apply this stuff in context. So listen to Chick, listen to Herbie. They are better examples than I'll ever be. So check those guys out. So that's all for today. I hope you got a lot out of this video. Again, got some different options available for working with me and my techniques. If you actually wanna work one-on-one, -on -one, set up a quick free call with myself or one of my coaches by clicking the link in the description for a strategy call. If you are interested in a video course, which is something I worked on really, really hard, really, really well laid out, a lot of great students already in there, join the waitlist for Jazz Piano Secrets, which opens up again in October so much material and value in that course. And finally, if you're just looking for some really nice strategic exercises to work on this right now, right this minute, um, go to jazzpianoconcepts.com slash store and check out 30 sick runs and arpeggios. You can immediately steal some of my vocabulary and put it directly into your playing. All right, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for hearing my little self-promotional shout outs. As always, I truly appreciate all of your support. I appreciate every view, every comment. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I love talking to you all. And with all that said, I will see you next time. All right, have a great week.